What up, what up, what up, what up? My name is Shabazz Larkin. I'm the author and illustrator of a little book called The Thing About Bees. And I just wanted to welcome everyone here to the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books. This is going to be such a great way to spend your time, energy, and love. So first, I want to say thank you to all the people that are here that keep books alive. So thank you, publishers. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> authors. Thank you, uh, booksellers. This is for you, librarians and teachers and parents. Um, all of you all here are doing uh, the work uh, <clears throat> and I just want to personally thank you. The thing about bees is all about uh, overcoming your fear. It sort of it pat it uh, tells a story of me and my two sons as we frolic around Nashville, Tennessee, um, and we sort of are being terrorized by bees. Uh, in the end, though, it actually is a message of tolerance. It's a message of making space for the things that we don't know or understand. Uh, because if we can make space for the things that we don't know and understand, um, then, uh, then we can live in a more peaceful, more tolerable universe. And that's the power of books. Books can help us to become the best parts of ourselves. So, listen. Uh, you can actually pick up the thing about bees at uh, the bookstore. Uh, our one of one of the bookstore indie bookstore partners at bookshop bookshop.org slash shop slash S D F O B. Okay. All right. So remember, if you're gonna buy books, don't buy it from anywhere else except bookshop.org slash shop slash s d f o b and and or or your local bookstore so love you guys and welcome again to the san diego union tribune festival of books my name is shabazz larkin and i hope that you enjoy your day all right peace This is the story about a few bees. This story is by me, Shabazz Larkin, and Royal. That's the man behind the camera. And that is the bumblebee. That's also him right there on the cover of the book. So what is the thing about bees? A book. <laughs> A book by who? Papa. And what's this book about? This book about bees. <laughs> and what, what sound does the bee make? Perfect. The Thing About Bees, a love letter. This book is dedicated to my sons who teach me what it means to be fearless. When a bee and a flower love each other very much, a fruit is born. The flower makes a yellow sticky dust called pollen. And as the bee drinks the flower's nectar, she gets pollen all over her hairy body. Have you ever gotten pollen all over your hairy body? The bee moves from one flower to another. Then we wait and wait and presto, the flower turns into a fruit that we can eat. This process is called pollination. We'd be hungry without the bees. They help vegetables and nuts grow too. So be sure to thank the bees. Thank you, bees. Pollination. 
Today, this book, The Thing About Bees, is all about pollination, about where our food comes from. And our food comes from a little process called pollination. Well, at least the fruits and the vegetables and the cotton and the coffee. And well, I guess we'll get into that as we read a little bit more in the book. Here's the thing about bees. Sometimes bees can be a bit rude. They fly in your face and prance on your food. They buzz in the bushes and buzz in your ear. They sneak up behind you and fill you with fear. And worst of all, they do this thing called sting. We may want bees gone because their sting hurts. But if they were all gone, it would hurt much worse. Without bees, there'd be no more picnics with watermelon. Does anybody out there love watermelon? There'd be no more smoothies with mango. My family is from Jamaica, and we eat a lot of mangoes when you're from Jamaica. There'd be no more strawberries for shortcakes. No more avocados for tacos. There'd be no apples, which means no more pie. No more cucumbers, which means no more pickles. No more blueberries and raspberries for pancakes or sweet cherries to drizzle. Because some foods won't grow without bees to help them along. In a way, the bees are just like you. You, you buzz in the bushes and buzz in my ear. You sneak up behind me and fill me with fear. You fly in my face and prance on my food. You even sting when you're in a bad mood. But I never stop loving you. You're my sweet cherry, the apple pie of my eye. You're my cucumber pickle, my bumblebee in the sky. You're my cold watermelon at a picnic in the park. You're the avocados on my tacos. You're my strawberry heart. Without those little buzzers, the world wouldn't know what to do. That's the thing about bees. We need them just as much as we need you. I wrote this little special note in the back. I have a lot to learn from bees. I wrote this book because I have a ridiculous fear of the bees. And when my sons were born, I didn't want to pass that fear to them. So I set out to discover all that I could about the little buzzers. I learned three things. Are you ready? First, I learned that every living creature has a special part to play in the world, and that includes you. Second, when I learned more about a scary thing, the thing feels less scary to me. Third, I research which bees and wasps are kind and which are kind of mean. I made a guide to help you see the difference too. It's brave to understand the things that scare us. Now go be brave. Love me, Shabazz. And I've made a guide about everything you need to know about how not to get stung. A guide to bees and wasps from kind to kind of mean. There's lots and lots of species of bees and wasps in the world, and I brought a few of the most common ones so you can know how not to get stung. Let's start over here with the bumblebee. Now, the bumblebee is pretty friendly bee. It's pretty friendly. You know the bumblebee because it's very fuzzy and fat. It's the friendliest of all the bees. 
It can sting, but usually ignores humans. It nests in the ground. It's an excellent pollinator and makes honey, but not nearly as much honey as the honeybees. It's very fuzzy and too big and blobby for its own tiny wings. Next is the carpenter bee. It's The carpenter bee is a big, harmless bee. It rarely stings, makes nests in dead wood. You may have seen it drilling little holes in the side of your house. It's a great pollinator, which means it spreads pollen around and helps the flowers grow into fruits and nuts and vegetables, and has a little furry jacket. And then there's the honeybee. Now, the honeybee is the world's best pollinator and pollen eater. It's very friendly, can only sting once, so it doesn't really want to sting you. Lives inside hollow trees or logs or in human-built hives. The honeybee makes honey and then eats it. It makes wax to build honeycombs for storing pollen, honey, and baby bees and does a little waggle dance to help hive mates find the good flowers. So the honeybees are the hardest working bees in the business. So remember, anytime you're tasting some honey, remember to thank the honeybees. Now let's get to the wasps. Now, the wasps aren't really bees, but we always call them bees. And that's a mistake because the wasps are the ones that start to get unkind. But before we get to the unkind bees, we'll start with the mud diver. Now, the mud diver is interesting because though it looks very menacing, it's actually one of the wasps that you don't have to worry about. This little buzzer is not really a bee. It's not aggressive, rarely stings, has a long skinny body with almost no hair, it hunts for spiders for dinner. So if you got a spider problem, one of these mud doppers might help to take care of that. Most famous for its tube shaped nests made out of mud, but it is not a pollinator. Then there is the hornet, the largest wasps, only aggressive when threatened, still hurts the most of all wasps and they can sting more than once, so watch out. A pollinator, but much less than the bees. It chews wood into a pulp to make paper nests and loves to eat rotting fruit and other insects. So if you got some rotting fruit around, you might also get a couple wasps too. Now, to the last of all the wasps, to the meanest of them all, the yellow jacket. It's very aggressive when threatened, not very hairy, also not a bee, but they do pollinate a bit. And if you see one, walk away slowly. If one stings you, run away fast because others will follow. Hunts garden pests, making gardens happy, and eats meat and people food, making picnickers very grumpy. So with that, I'll finish the book with the last page. It says, but seriously, we need to love the pollinators. Do all you can to save the bees, please. And if you're still afraid of the bees, you can wear a beekeeper suit like this because we are all beekeepers. Remember, love will conquer fear. Thanks for listening to this book. As an author and an illustrator, I've chosen to make the world a better place by encouraging people to love and understand the bees in ways that they haven't before. And so as we read this book, think about how you can respect, honor, and love the earth in a better way. Think about what you can create. How can you get people excited about loving and caring for the bees? How can you get people loving and caring for the earth? And most of all, how can you get people loving and caring for themselves and overcoming their fears? That's what this book is all about. And I'm curious to see what your book will be all about. Again, my name is Shabazz Larkin, and I hope to see you soon.
Hello, I'm Jose Cruz. I'm the CEO for the San Diego Council on Literacy. We work with a network of 29 youth, adult, and family literacy programs that annually serve 160,000 residents of all ages at no cost. Our mission is to unite the community to support literacy. It's an exciting year for us. It's our 35th anniversary. It's also the fifth anniversary of the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books. The San Diego Council on Literacy is a beneficiary of this event. So when you participate, you support literacy, especially through the author panels um, and just in general. So um, when you participate in this event, you also make it possible for another person, a child or an adult, to improve their reading and writing skills so they can read the books that you read. We have our favorite event activities. We like the story time hour, and you probably have your favorites too. So we hope that you'll join us at the San Diego Union Tribune Festival of Books and learn more too about the work of the San Diego Council on Literacy by going to literacysandiego.org. Thank you.